on this edition of Check 60 Aviation, the rudder, well, it is finished. Welcome back to Check 60 Aviation, my friend. I'm very happy to be back with you. At the time of the recording of this part of the video, it's just past Thanksgiving 2023. And let me tell you, I'm super grateful for you taking the time out of your busy day to spend with us and follow along with the building of this Vans Aircraft RV-10. I mean, it's a special project, but I'm especially grateful for everyone who has taken the time to support the channel by giving us a thumbs up and smashing that like button down below and subscribing to each and every uh, subscribing to the channel because let's face it that's how the channel grows so be sure to set your notification belts to all so you don't miss any video future videos that we put out now we're back in the workshop and this time we're finishing up the rudder and let me tell you it feels so good to be back after taking the summer off to get out and meet some of the some of you at Oshkosh and to focus on putting together the videos that we've already shot because let's face it it's you know Oshkosh was back in June and here it is just after Thanksgiving so we're going to be back here building this Vans RV10 and if you haven't seen the previous video it's right up there where you can go watch it after finish after you finish this video because we're not going to have a long long winded intro this time because well we just want to get back to it and we want to keep the video as, as short as possible so without further ado let's get to it as promised in the previous video this is part two and the final installment in this series However, in order to accomplish the feat of making our videos 20 minutes or less, we've had to go a little bit longer on this one. Future videos, however, will be within this time allotment. Here, we're working on the trailing edge wedge and countersinking the holes where the dimpled skins will make contact with each, with each other for the double blind flush riveting. Rather than using a handheld drill, I thought it was best to accomplish this step using the drill press to achieve stability and consistency on both sides of the wedge. All right, so I thought I had this camera rolling but I had the overhead camera on instead. There was some sort of technical malfunction. Technology is a wonderful thing when it actually works. So what you may or may not have seen was me over here at the drill press going ahead and um, uh, machine countersinking the trailing edge wedge here. And that is all done. I have taken a rivet and put it in the, each of the, of the holes and we're good to go. We are good to go ahead and start putting this rudder, this rudder together. And for the last time, unless of course, God forbid, anything goes wrong with it, then we do a, a simple fix and repair. So the plans say to lay everything out flat, we use eight number 40 Clecos, these are the silver ones, and put them in each of the rib, uh, where each of the stiffeners are, uh, along with this, but after, after, we lay a very thin coat of Pro Seal. Now, for the Pro Seal, I have these tubes, which are somewhere around here. Oh, here they are. I have these tubes that will get mixed up. And it, it's basically, it's, it's basically tank sealant. Now these have long since expired, but if you're not using them on the tanks, it is okay to use as long as it is not on a structural piece. I think that's what they said. But uh, for, for the, the trailing edges, perfectly fine. So I actually happen to have the way that you are the way that you do this 
is probably should have. That's all right. I have a I have another one uh, that I can use. Um, there is this little nozzle that plugs in here. Um, let's see. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna put the glasses on, read the instructions on how to mix this up. You have two hours. Pull, dasher, push rod towards the neck of the cartridge. Oh, so hold this. I am machine mixing, and I guess that I put insert ramrod into the hole. Until approximately 10% of the material contained in the dasher rod has been expelled into the cartridge. How do I know if it's 10%? Well, there's, I guess that would be 100%. Where, where did I put, where, where was it? I think. There we go. For some materials, slowly push the dasher rod into the cartridge while pushing on the ram too evenly. So I am pushing on this. Then normally, if you were doing this by hand, you would go ahead and just mix it all up. Uh, when the dasher rod reaches the cartridge plunger, all the materials do, do not expel a large quantity of dasher into the bottom, top or bottom of the cartridge. Remove the ram rod and discard. So I'm supposed to take this. Okay, so yes, it, uh, it is all in there. It is all mixed. And I'm starting to smell what everyone's been talking about with Pro Seal, how it doesn't smell that good. This was about 20 bucks when I bought it. And that was about, ooh, I don't know, about, uh, whole cartridge in an upright position. Mixing, uh, thread the mixing machine head into the dasher rod, which I have. Turn the mixing machine, <laughs> I guess the mixing machine would be my drill, and This is a family show. I'm not gonna tell you what I think this looks like, but hey, it is what it is. We're all, well, we should be adults here. All right, so. Mixing with the dasher rod fully extended. Ah, okay. So it doesn't come out this end, it comes out this end. The 
nice even color. So that's what I guess we are supposed to be looking for. That doesn't smell all that bad. Remove dasher cap from cartridge. Unscrew the dasher rod by gripping the cartridge. Okay, done that. Um, now, this is mixed and now it has a two hour working time. All right, so we are, I'm back in the workshop and it has been, well, let's see, I did this on Saturday. This is now Wednesday morning. So it's been, it's been a while. It's been a while since this has been setting up. The plans say that I should wait a couple days. Uh, after talking with bands, it, it could be as much as a week to two weeks before the Pro Seal finally sets up. Now to recap, uh, we went ahead, I went ahead and enlisted my daughter's help, my eldest daughter, Serena, uh, and she went ahead and helped peel back one of the skins to allow me to get a pull rivet uh, into each of the ribs, each of the stiffeners to form the skeleton inside the rudder. So, and this was all after I had already applied ProSeal to the trailing edge and the trailing edge wedge. Um, a lot of people say, well, trailing edge wedge, uh, I've heard some builders, you know, kind of, you know, say, oh, you know, um, it's scary, you know, type thing. Really wasn't all that scary. Uh, I went ahead and made sure that it all fit. I made sure that it was, um, that it, it formed completely, that there was nothing sticking out. I trimmed the tri the, the wedge. Um, I think it's, uh, the, I think the, the part number is, for, for the kit is Y, uh, 140 or something like that, or YF 140. I'm not sure off the top of my head, I'd have to look. But, uh, and then after I got it all set, they said, go ahead and put, uh, put it, you know, board over it, you know, put some weight. Uh, I went, I went ahead and had these, uh, clamps. Um, yeah, I went ahead and had these clamps that I set and that was sufficient. Um, now it is still a little tacky, but not much. I mean, I, if I if I butt my belly up to it, and you know, the, the shirt will go ahead and um, kind of stick temporarily to it, but not really. Not a month. It's it's not going to get transferred onto my clothes. So that's a good thing. So we are ready to go ahead and take this off now. Um, while the uh, on Saturday. <coughs> <coughs> now, on Saturday, I did get a little bit of um, anxious to move forward, and I installed the the uh, the main spar for this because I wanted to give this a little bit more stiffness, um, I, and I also put another board underneath. To you know, you know, underneath before I clamped it all down, because we've got the 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 rudder horn back in the back that would go ahead and uh, otherwise cause a um, a, a non-level condition with the board underneath and also some additional stakes underneath that board, providing a little bit more lift, uh, a little bit more height. And then the the main clamp board over it that went ahead and allowed me enough clearance when I clamped it down to get that rudder horn off of the workbench. So let's go ahead and take this loose. We'll get this out of here and. will continue with the rivet process. Okay. 
and check the work in the meantime. Now I am, one of the things I am concerned with is oil canning. Uh, pillowing is another one uh, where I can, if I come over here, not so much now. Okay, so there's a little bit of oil canning there. This is the part where I took the suggestion of a select few builders that I saw on the Vans Aircraft uh, Facebook group mentioned that they thought it looked a lot better on the riveting if they alternated the rivets where instead of you know where they have one facing up skip a hole have the other another one facing up and then just did the opposite for what the other side so I tried it and I'm actually quite pleased with how everything turned out Now, uh, I chose to start in the middle, like the plans suggest, and kind of work outward, like like here. Yeah, there's a little bit of oil canning there, but when I get when I get into actually riveting this, that oil canning should go away, and it has been my experience so far that that does go away. So, let's go ahead and get to it. In the last video, I had kind of went over, touched on a, an announcement that Vans Aircraft had put out about their financial difficulties as of late, and kind of wanted to go over where I was going to, what my plans were with the rest of this build. Well, I got into why I thought that Vans Aircraft as a company was much too valuable of a company for it to not continue in some form. As a matter of fact, if you want to see the, the my explanation, well, the video is up in the top right corner. The link for it is in there. Uh, plus, also, the I'll put the link for the video down in the description box below in the show notes. I've heard it called. Um, I also put the video for Vans Aircraft down there once again, but since that video, since the time between my last video and this one, Vans has put out a uh, kind of a, a, a non-update. Uh, they were expecting to have some sort of a resolution. They were hoping to have a, re a resolution of what the company was going to be was going to look like by mid-November. Well, here it is past Thanksgiving and into December now that we don't have a, you know, a definitive answer to that question, but we at least have some communication in, in the interim. The link for that is also up in, up in the corner of this video. And I, did, I neglected to say what my plans were. <laughs> I, You know, sometimes I get rattling and I just don't have any direction especially when everything that I say pretty much is non-scripted so with all that said I'm just going to keep on building I do still believe that Vans is too uh, too valuable of a company for it to not exist in some form there are builders that are sell selling kits all the time that you know from projects that they've decided to not continue so at some point I'm just going to have to focus on a bigger workspace and that's where we're going from here plus the fact that I'm going to be going to flight school. Um, oops, this is why you do the plans and do everything in the order that they tell you to. Well, for the most part, um, because I thought I'd be able to go ahead and get uh, get some, a finger or something to hold the bucking bar around into the slot here um, down through here and yeah that's not happening um, so the only thing I can think of is to drill out a few rivets a number of rivets peel the skin back and put these these clips in um, yeah 
but it, says, it does say 426 uh, 4-6s go in here. I can go ahead and put in put them in into where they go, squeeze them down and on the bottom here and get them set but uh, for the for the top rivets yeah no oops lesson learned I'm using the hammer here in an attempt to get the rivet to set properly but then I realized something very critical. Actually, let's take a number 30 drill. And find where I, what I did with my number 30 drill bits. And make sure to clean out that hole because when you prime, there is some primer that tends to get into the holes. Shop organization is key. That is definitely for sure. This is a portion where I'm like, I'm so glad that I took my time and actually understood the plans. But in going back and editing this video, I remember now that I didn't understand the plans quite enough. I also did not look at the diagram that I showed earlier, just a, a few seconds ago, close enough. And here in a moment, you'll see me kind of wrestling with this and taking a picture with my phone. Well, what happened was the next day I had called Vans and said, hey, listen, um, what gives here? Am I doing this wrong? And they said, yeah, you're trying to install them into the wrong holes. So there's the picture right there. And thankfully I did because then I went ahead and saw that, hey, um, yeah, I was in the wrong in here. I'm just putting them right where they should be. And uh, because the problem I was having was that they weren't, the, the rivets weren't going in and they weren't fitting. They weren't coming out all the way like they should have. And I was using the correct size rivet that the plans called for, but they weren't, you know, there wasn't enough rivet to squeeze. And so, yeah, after I got them over the right holes, there was magically enough room, enough rivet to squeeze. And uh, I was able to uh, say, you know, the plan said, hey, you dummy. Um, well, they didn't actually, <laughs> they were very, they were not much nicer than that. Uh, they <laughs> said, hey, listen, um, the top two rivets, you know, they're supposed to be pull rivets. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, have you ever seen those V8 commercials of, you know, I'm dating myself here, I know I am, but, you know, where they just slap their head and say, oh, I could have had a V8. Um, yeah, it was kind of one of those moments for me. But now we're past that, where we've got the rudder counterweight installed, and we're actually working on finishing up the securement of that counterweight here at the stage of the build. And the reason for the counterweight is because you've got a whole bunch of aerodynamic forces that that counterweight will serve to kind of help counteract it will help lessen the amount of pressure needed on the rudder um yeah so i mean it, it really i think actually that now that i think this through a little bit better 
and correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below, that the counterweight actually serves to balance out the rudder on the hinges a lot better. Let me know if if any of you aerodynamic wizards out there, uh, if I'm actually correct in my original theory of it lessen of the counterweight lessening the force needed on the rudder pedals. So I mean I, I'd be interested to hear. I'm still learning about aerodynamics, and uh, if you want to go ahead and get some extras, join the Patreon crew down below. The flight crew is awesome. Uh, we go ahead and. Yeah, well, we've got it all listed down below. But uh, if you haven't subscribed by now and hit that notification bell, this is an excellent time to do it. Uh, the final step, though, is coming up where we go ahead and start rolling the skins. Now, I had originally thought about, well, what happens if, you know, how, would I, how am I going to do this? Uh, could I just go ahead and just drill a few holes in the, into this one-inch pipe? Uh, I think I'm yeah I think I'm using a one inch pipe or a, uh, a one inch and a half because you really want the inner diameter to be one inch yeah I, actually you want the outer diameter to be one inch some people have used a broom handle uh, I used what I had uh, I, I found that this pipe was actually uh, was sufficient for what for my purposes and I thought it maybe you Go ahead and roll it by drilling a couple holes and Van said no 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 don't do that and after thinking about it you they're right it would have just elongated the holes i didn't need that hassle so thanks for watching be sure to hit the subscribe button once again if you haven't already and here's a couple of videos that youtube thinks you might want to watch until next time remember this time and always check your six